thank you for joining me for another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So I hope you enjoyed the last two episodes where we pulled together um, some top, top label owners and artists who are flying high and getting their music released on bigger and bigger and more exciting labels and they shared their insights into what it takes to be heard what it takes to get signed to build relationships and of course the pitfalls and the traps you can fall into when it comes to getting your music out into the world so if you haven't checked those out i do recommend jumping back make an intention to watch those because they're very powerful no matter where you are on your journey whether you're shooting for that first release or you're now at the stage where you're aiming to hit uh, your dream labels there are massive insights that are going to help you to get there faster um, and in a more efficient way and so this episode is inspired by actually the same thing that inspired the last two episode episodes which is a remix challenge that we are currently running inside of the finish more music community now it's a remix challenge and not a remix competition. So I want to share with you what that means and why it's important and then how it ties into this episode because this episode is all about a way of thinking about your music and when you get this concept it goes much further than just your music. It will improve the quality of your life, the quality of your art and your music, of course, but it will also improve your chances of getting the outcomes and the dreams um, that you really are aspiring to for you and your family. So the challenge itself works like this, and here's why it's not a competition. Initially, what we did was we spoke to a fantastic label who have signed one of our members and with our member, which is Sean. And if you've checked out um, his podcast with his other half, Amber, which is episode number 173, they produce as Kakur. It's a fantastic episode. I recommend checking it out. It's all about following your dreams, which is tied very tightly into this, in fact and how to do that when you're doing that in a relationship, how to be supportive of one another as unique individuals, but how to come together so that you're more than the sum of your parts. Very, very uh, powerful episode. So that's 173. So Sean has a release on manual music, fantastic piece of music called The Witcher. And we got our heads together with Paul, who runs the label Manual Music, which is, again, a, a top, top label, and he's a fantastic record label owner exactly the type you want to get in bed with and that's why I mentioned checking out the previous two podcasts because you'll hear what it is like to work with a really good label owner who's investing in you and in your future and wants to build a partnership together and we decided hey here's what we're going to do we'll have a masterclass which we had uh, a couple of weeks back with Sean where he really opened up the project that everyone's going to get to remix and he showed all of the, the different parts, how it was made. So everyone got an insight into how you go about creating a piece of music at this level and at this quality. And then we opened up the remix challenge, which everyone obviously gets the stems as you would in a normal remix environment. However, we provided PDFs, resources, video walkthroughs and, and guides on remixing that we've created uh, specifically for FMM. And then when everyone uploads to the deadline, um, Paul is going to jump on and do a live A&R session. So people get even further into the minds of a top record label owner, how they think about the music, what their considerations are, not just of the music, but also of the person behind the music and who they do and don't want to work with. Now, one of the things that really separates this from being a competition is there's no guarantee that anyone's going to get signed. Now, what you'll obviously see out in the world is lots of competitions and, oh, if you if you win this, if we select you, you'll get signed and all of these things. But I specifically didn't want Paul to be obliged to sign music because I want him as a label owner to be in integrity to his music. And he said, that's absolutely what I want. That's why I wouldn't have just done this as a competition. The vision 
for the label and the integrity behind the music that I want on here is really important. And moreover than that, of course, you wouldn't want to sign for a label that's just bringing you on board because you won the competition because there's no guarantee that actually you're at the quality they would have signed or the taste anyway. No guarantee, therefore, that they're ever going to want to sign anything else. And in fact, I've seen a bunch of competitions where people have won it and then their music's never actually been put out in the world. The label just disappears off because it doesn't, it's not representative of what they really want on the label. And it all sounds like a good idea at the time. So our members now know that if they get signed, they're getting signed by someone who actually does believe in them and their music. And they do have this possibility of really expanding into a future and being mentored and learn with this label owner and all of the exciting things that you would want um, from a label relationship. So that's how it's um, very different to a competition. And here's why we designed it in the way that we did with this opportunity to learn from Sean, to learn from all our masterclasses, to uh, be in a community, contribute into each other's success and to learning from the A&R side. And the reason is really simple. It isn't a matter of having to achieve the outcome or the goal. It's a matter of who you become as a result of going all in and your pursuit of that goal or outcome. And that's where we're going with this podcast now, because it's a really important distinction to get our head around. And ultimately what we're saying, and this is a great Jim Rohn quote, is happiness isn't contained in what you have. Happiness is contained in who you become, i.e. your state of being. And so being is the subject of this podcast. And I'm going to give you a fair warning on this one. This might be one of those ones that you're going to come back to a few times because we are going down uh, one of the Keith Rabbit holes on this one. But I promise you, if you grasp this concept, it will improve the quality of your art, the quality of your life, and the chances of you living into the dreams and the goals that you really, really want to achieve in your life. So let's start with this word being, because that's what the podcast is centered around. Now, if you look it up, you're going to find it has two meanings, and we're going to dive into both of them. The first meaning of the word being is simply existence. And the second meaning is the nature or essence of a person. And they are both highly, highly relevant to creating art. So I'm going to start with this first one, existence. Now, You may be someone who finds yourself often uh, not existing, but actually being in what I would consider to be a word that's a juxtaposition of being, which is always in a state of becoming. Always in a state of becoming. So you'll know this is you if you find yourself regularly and consistently saying to yourself, when I've got this thing, or when this condition happens in my life, then I'll do this, then I'll go for this, or, oh, this thing I've achieved that I really wanted to achieve, it's okay, but it could be better, or yes, I hit my goal, but now I really want to hit this goal, or that goal, or I'll be better next time. Never ever satisfied with where you are now, never content with where you are now, never happy now. Your happiness is always predicated on some future event or outcome. And when you get it, you're still not happy because it's not this event. It's that next event. It's that next thing, constantly chasing the next big thing. It's a miserable way to live and it's a miserable way to create art. And I know about this because this was me for a very, very long time. And it stopped me from resting. I did a podcast on this. I can't remember the the number of this, but I realized that I just wasn't resting. I was never satisfied. I was never settled. I was always looking at where we were going, what we were going to become as a team, what the members would become, what I could become. What's the next goal? What's the next thing? What's this? Oh, I've got to get this. I've got to have this thing. Not just material assets, but just the things, the outcomes, the environment who you are as a person. It's like, oh, when I get this, then I'll rest. And that moment never, ever comes. Oh, when this thing happens, then I'll invest in myself. It's a classic one. And what this does is it leads to burnout. 
to stress, of course, to being unsatisfied most of the time, to even when there are moments of success and happiness, to only being in them for a matter of seconds sometimes before it's, oh, what have we got to do now? What am I going to do next? And it's this kind of mentality of being a race driver who never takes a pit stop. And what happens when you never rest, when you never settle into a state of being? Well, eventually the car, the tires start going down, right? You're eventually going to completely run out of petrol. That's your burnout for you. But you're just going to come to a stop, a massive slowdown and then a stop. And of course, any other race driver who is resting, and if it were you who were resting, you would be going a lot further and you'd be going a lot faster. So this way of being is is particularly miserable in life and it's particularly miserable when we are creating art. Now, being is a juxtaposition of this, as in being in the moment, being fully present. So not worrying about the future. And worrying about the future is a bizarre human trait. As far as we know, it's only humans who do this thing. We worry about the future and our predictions of the future when in actual fact the future doesn't exist. It simply isn't a thing and neither does the past. It's not a thing. There is only now. That's all there can possibly be right now. And you might say, well, hang on a minute, but Keith, that tree will exist tomorrow. Well, who is it existing to? you, right? And you might not exist tomorrow. And as it happens, the tree might not exist tomorrow. It could get hit by lightning or a forest fire or fall into a sinkhole, or you could wander under a bus, you know, or something something else. And that might sound really grim. But actually, I, I spoke about this when I had my hearing loss, you know, that was instant. One minute I can hear and it's everything I've built my, my life around, I thought at the time. Oh my God, what a, what a catastrophe. But then I came into the realization and, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned this on the podcast. I'm sure I have. I've recovered fully my hearing now. But there was this moment of realization that anything that we have can get taken from us in a second. Anything. You know, if you, you might see that tree, but you know, God forbid something could happen to your eyesight and it could go. So relish the moment, be in the now, live every moment with full intensity as much as you possibly can, as much as you possibly can, because now is all there is. And I have a Sam Harris quote for you. Um, The reality of your life is always now. And to realize this, we will see is liberating. In fact, I think there is nothing more important to understand if you want to be happy in this world. But we spend most of our lives forgetting this truth, overlooking it, fleeing it, repudiating it. And the horror is that we succeed. We manage to avoid being happy while struggling to become happy. I think that last line is worthy of a repeat, right? We manage to avoid being happy while struggling to become happy and not being in the moment. And here's how this ties into your art. By worrying about what your art will be or should be, you stop it from becoming what it could be. So I'm going to say that again as well, because I know we're we're kind of going down some pretty deep, what's he talking about territory here? By worrying about what your art will be, you stop it from becoming what it could be. And you think about this, you you know, maybe you have this happen yourself. You get into this world of overthinking and second guessing and what will he say, she say, label say, you know, what will people say if I put it out in the world? It becomes quite tiring. It interrupts your creative flow and it interrupts what that piece of art could be if you just stayed present and you were just in the moment of creating the art. Because that future doesn't exist, so it's futile projecting into it what exists is now and being in this moment. And let me put it another way. If you worry about the future, then you aren't creating it. You are worrying about it. You are not in full action. You are worrying about it. You're worrying about a future that doesn't exist instead of taking action fully in the now. And by being fully present and acting in the now guess what happens? That is the creation of the future. So 
here's a, a an even kind of more of a, a mind spinning way to think about this is all of your worries all of your anxieties have been created by the past they're your past experiences and so when you are worrying you are living at least in part into the past and therefore you can't possibly be living fully into the now and creating your future so you're burning energy you're burning bandwidth you're interrupting the possibility of creative flow and you are worrying and avoiding taking what you perceive as being risks based on your past experiences and the past doesn't exist and because of all of this you're avoiding going all in you can't possibly be doing anything other than avoiding going all in and by default you're less likely to achieve the things you want to achieve the future that you would love to happen and the reality is the future doesn't exist the future is empty there is absolutely nothing there and that is great because it is a blank canvas so you get to create the possibility of whatever you want and then by staying in the present and acting that possibility has the greatest chance of coming into fruition but worrying and being fearful based on things about the past is worrying and be fi being fearful and it's not taking action in the direction of what you hope to achieve in the future. And this is where I'm going to tie this back into to a real world example and that's the remix challenge. So one of the big things that I really wanted to shoo to get across to our members is don't worry about whether Paul signs your track or doesn't sign your track it is not a matter of getting signed it's a matter of being in the moment expressing yourself taking fully this opportunity to learn and to grow and if you do that you will win because you will learn and you will grow and by default you'll become a person who is more likely to be able to take the opportunity of getting signed in the future but by avoiding this because you're worried, oh, what might he say or I might get rejected, which might happen. But by worrying about these things that haven't happened. In fact, I heard this phrase, what was it? Worrying about it going wrong before it goes right, which I thought was a great phrase. Worrying about it going wrong before it goes right. Then you don't even take the opportunity. And so you lose by default. Okay. Now, this ties us in really nicely. It's a nice link to that second meaning of being. So the first meaning which we've just covered is existence. The second meaning is the nature or essence of a person, as in human being, right? Now, here's how these things are so beautifully linked together. The nature or essence of a person will develop to the degree that you're able to stop worrying about the past and stop worrying about the future. Let me say it again, the nature or essence of a person will develop to the degree that you are able, in fact we could say the nature or essence of you will develop to the degree that you're able to stop worrying about the past and the future. Whatever it is that you want to achieve, whatever outcome you want, thing you want to have, a dream that you've got, where you want to take your art, who you want to be as a music producer, by being in the now and enjoying what you're doing, by being present, like letting the worries go, be present to the now, be in the now, you're automatically becoming a new version of you. A version of you capable of the achievements and the outcomes you want whether or not you achieve any specific outcome or goal. Your nature and your essence will grow and you will be more capable of achieving bigger and more exciting things in your life. Back to the Jim Rohn quote. Happiness is not contained in what you have, it's contained in who you become. Because who you become is more able to achieve the things that you want to achieve, to live in the moment, to be a happy person, and all of these wonderful, wonderful things that we get to experience as human beings. So looping it right back round again, no guarantee of getting signed in the Remix Challenge. The guarantee is that when our members embrace this wholeheartedly and they don't worry about getting signed and 
they embrace every moment of the challenge and of the art that they're writing, they will become a person more capable of getting signed in the future. So hopefully that's all tied together and I was able to articulate it because I realise it's a pretty deep subject that we've gone into. <laughs> you, were, you might have been thinking, oh, I wonder what Keith's got to say in the next solo episode. Now you're thinking, oh my gosh, get, get somebody else in for an interview, will you? <laughs> But I hope that that made sense. Um, as I mentioned, you may want to go through this again. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. If you just got an inkling of it, or even if your mind's trying to work to compute this stuff, it will have planted a seed that I promise you will grow into something beautiful over time. So bottom line, if you grasp this concept, and if you are aware of this as much as you can be, it's it's okay sort of drinking knowledge in, but if you make some white space for this, maybe even consider this if you have a morning routine uh, or other moments in your day and just ponder on this for a moment and you grasp this concept, then the quality of your life will improve. You'll be more present to what you're doing. You'll be more worry-free, less consumed by anxiety if that's something that uh, you find is more in your life than you'd like it to be. And the quality of your art will improve. You'll be more in creative flow. You'll love what you're doing. You'll hear the sounds. You'll be present to what you're doing rather than projecting into a future that doesn't exist and worrying about it. And of course, when you're doing that, that's when your best art is going to come through. That's when you have the best chance of achieving the outcomes that you want and the dreams that you want in your life. They'll come into your grasp. All you have to do is set your intentions and be in the now knowing that your success is inevitable. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I've been getting some amazing um, comments and ideas and experiences and had some brilliant conversations with people on Instagram. So um, if you've been sitting on the fence a little bit about that, worrying about the future or what might happen, how might this be perceived if I write this or say this or send this, remember that doesn't exist. Just be in the now, let all of that stuff go. And if there's something you'd like to say, absolutely, I'd love to hear from you. So it's Instagram at I am Keith Mills. Just ping me a DM. I promise that I will get back to you on it. Uh, there's been a little bit of a delay um, just because we had the, the move into our new house, but I'm starting to catch up now. So it will be uh, business as usual um, very, very soon. So please do reach out to me at I am Keith Mills. DM me on Instagram. Uh, show notes, finishmoremusic.com forward slash 191. The countdown has begun to the big 200. Uh, which is absolutely awesome. Who'd have, who'd have thunk it when I started this out that we'd be uh, just in the blink of an eye seemingly on the verge of hitting the uh, the 200th episode. But I mean, a huge thank you for listening and if you're a long-term listener for your support and if you reach out on the, the DMs as well, uh, absolutely love you to bits. So thank you very much and uh, do stay safe. I hope you enjoyed this show and until next time, happy music making. Music making.